Hi, everybody. Al Bernstein here with another one of my quick hits following what was a active weekend uh, in the sport of boxing, one that I was intricately involved in, uh, the mayweather Berto uh, pay-per-view uh, at the MGM Grand on Saturday night on Showtime pay-per-view, uh, which featured a terrific undercard that we, I will get into in a different quick hits. But in this one, I will talk about the main event, uh, Troy Mayweather and Andre Berto. We'll revisit that, <clears throat> talk a little bit about not only that fight, but what it means to Floyd Mayweather if, in fact, he is retiring from the sport. Let's first talk about the actual fight between Floyd Mayweather and Andre Berto. Uh, Berto had come in a little leaner and a little smaller than some people thought at 145, and you could physically see he had, they had changed his body, and I think he and Virgil Hunter worked hard for this fight. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think we can say that Andre Berto did the best he could. Uh, that may be damning with faint praise, but nonetheless, um, that is exactly what he did. Normally in a Floyd Mayweather fight, the first couple of rounds are rounds in which the challenger can get a couple of things done and then Mayweather um, fixes it. You know, I've said many times before, he's like the Borg on Star Trek, you know, a weapon works against him and then he reconfigures himself so that it doesn't work again. In this fight, to be honest, Mayweather came out himself uh, quickly from the start <clears throat> and right away tried to establish ground with Berto. Didn't really move that much in the first part of the fight. Um, and, and was winning those early rounds. So that was a bad sign for Berto because usually, as I say, a challenger might bank one or two of those rounds. Berto was unable to do it. Uh, Paul Malnagy, of course, who was working the fight with me, made the point uh, that Andre Berto had no shades of gray in his attack. No, uh, the, everything was a fastball, as he put it. And it is true. He was trying so hard to land those punches that, there was no change in the pace that he was fighting, and that made the job a little easier for Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather in this fight was who Mayweather is, uh, a brilliant defensive fighter. He landed some nice punches, landed close to, I think, 60% overall of his punches, 50-some percent, which is astonishing, and was precise, as he always is. Uh, was able to stay off the ropes for the most part in this fight. And when he was on the ropes, was able to do what we've seen Mayweather do so many times before, and that is um, uh, cover up, then wheel away while he's pushing his – he's getting his opponent off his balance and then landing counter punches. Um, he does that move superbly. So Floyd Mayweather was sharp from the beginning. Uh, Berto kept trying, kept coming. Uh, ironically for Berto, who has taken a lot of punishment in some of the fights uh, he's been in in the last several years, uh, he didn't take that much punishment. You could see it in his face. There wasn't, a, you know, though Mayweather certainly landed his share of punches in this fight. Either way, it was a dominant win for Floyd Mayweather. And depending on your outlook, you can either say it, it um, supports the notion that Andre Berto was uh, not – really an opponent that was uh, up to challenging Floyd Mayweather. Uh, or if you're a Mayweather enthusiast, you can say it shows again his excellence. It's probably a little bit of both, to be honest. At the end of the day, this fight demonstrated, in my opinion, that Andre Berto had certain skill sets that weren't really applicable to doing well against Floyd Mayweather, for instance, he's not a volume puncher. He throws about 45 punches around. That's about what he threw in this fight. You have to be a volume puncher if you're going to have any chance against Mayweather. In the only two fights in Mayweather's career in which he was challenged, the first fight against Marcos Maidana and uh, the fight against um, Jose Luis Castillo, uh, both of them were volume punchers. The other close fight he had, of course, was with Oscar De La Hoya, and that was primarily – a question of uh, physiology. Uh, De La Hoya used his height and length for parts of that fight to jab effectively and keep Mayweather off distance. And inexplicably, De La Hoya at a certain point decided to just wade in and be a fighter he wasn't even equipped to be, which is throwing these nutty punches while Mayweather was on the ropes. Uh, that's, on, that's on Oscar De La Hoya. I don't know why he did that. 
but but the fighters that have had success against him for the most part have been active. Berto isn't. And then the other thing it demonstrated is that even at 38, and this is where, regardless of your viewpoint of Floyd Mayweather, you have to acknowledge he's in there against certainly a very good welterweight. And at age 38, he can make him miss, uh, control the tempo of the fight, land almost at will. He was landing, and by the way, his body work was very good. He was landing just about, you know, any time he really wanted to. Um, and so, you know, that to me is this fight kind of in a nutshell. Moving forward for Floyd Mayweather, uh, he's allowed himself a little wiggle room over this being his last fight, but not too much. Uh, he's been pretty vehement for the most part uh, about this being his last fight. Now, <clears throat> that isn't to say that five months from now, one of those offers that he says he's already received to go back to the ring doesn't lure him back to the sport. There is the new arena to be opened in Las Vegas um, by his frequent partners uh, in association with the MGM who have uh, been with Mayweather. This is, I think, was his 11th consecutive fight at the MGM. So there will be temptations for Mayweather to come back to the sport. If it is his last fight, if this is the last time we've seen Floyd Mayweather, it will be a remarkable achievement that he was able to leave the sport undefeated, fight, I think, 25 former or current world champions during the course of his reign, <clears throat> and will certainly go down in history as one of the best defensive fighters that ever fought, and will probably go down as one of the, I would think, in the top 20 pound-for-pound uh, -pound fighters that have ever fought in the sport. Uh, is he the best ever? No, he is not. Sorry. Uh, at least not in my opinion, uh, but he's a terrific fighter and he's the best of this generation and he's the best of his era. So that's a pretty remarkable thing. Uh, and uh, the other thing that was intriguing was the fact that even in his final fight, there was a mental potential mental distraction for him with the story that emerged just a day or two before the fight um, about the IV he took and whether in fact uh, he had broken any of the rules of either the Nevada State Athletic Commission or the World Anti-Doping Association, which were was the rules that USADA allegedly patterns its rules after. Um, whether that story will have legs now, since Bob Bennett, the executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, came on the actual pay-per-view telecast and said they had no interest in pursuing it, whether it will be pursued at this juncture uh, remains to be seen. With if Mayweather is in fact leaving the sport, uh, it, it may give it less uh, juice. But either way, it, it, it could have been uh, something that uh, could have distracted Mayweather, but he doesn't get distracted. Um, so we may be at the end of the Floyd Mayweather era in boxing. Either way, we have to be very close to it because he's 38 and has been at it for a long time. Uh, but this one will go down in the books, as have many before it, and that is a dominant and complete victory for Floyd Mayweather.